This is Kasese, a district located in western Uganda. I call this my home. I was born here. I have also grown up here and I stay here with my family. River Nyamwamba is our lifeline. Collect water for domestic use here. We also graze our cattle from the river banks and also they quench their thirsty from here. Growing up just like these children, I used to swim and play in the water with friends. We also use this water for irrigation during the dry period to grow our crops. River Nyamwamba pours its water into Lake George. We get our fish from this water source. During times over the year, the water is blue, almost turning green. Downstream, the water sometimes turns brownish. A dark black coating on the stones worries me even more that we could be drinking contaminated water. Over the past couple of years, there has also been a spike in castle patients from my district. Community members have also been complaining of stomach pain and ulcers. Mose Nelson Kule is battling cancer. After several attempts at treatment, he was discharged from the hospital and now lies on this bed. He is in serious pain. <laughs> His hope is to make it through the night to live another day. These increasing cancer incidents are also worrying the communities. Dr. Yosef Baseke is the Kasese District Health Officer who speaks about the incidents. We need to have an operational search as a district know which type of malignancy is affecting our people from where what are the predisposing factor in that area we can be able to come to a conclusion we need to begin now because we have so many predisposing factors the smoking taking uh, aflatoxin from cassava, which we need to study critically. In fact, recently, a team from the Uganda Cancer Institute came to our community to conduct the cancer screening, and the results were shocking. In Kasese, what was common that we saw was cancer of the prostate, cancer of the cervix, cancer of the breast, uh, but also hepatitis B. Uh, when you look at them generally, uh, most of them are genetically linked. And so we could be having uh, a genetical uh, factor leading to increment, but also there could be other factors, more especially for the cause of the cervix and hepatitis B. One of the factors pointed out is the quality of water that we drink in the food that we eat. In Kasese, because of the cobalt and the copper, which are some of the heavy metals, they could have a predisposition of the population getting cancers, especially of the colon and of the stomach. That could be a factor. What we need to do as, as an institute and as a government, we need to have a study and compare the population in Kasese that are coming with these cancers with that of other populations and see if we could get a cause because it has to be scientifically proved that these metals are the actual metals causing the cancer. 
This investigation seeks to answer three questions. One, assessing the quality of the water consumed by my community. Two, the health implications of consuming this water. Three, if the water is contaminated, who should be held accountable? And finally, what can government do to change the situation? To assess the quality of the water that we consume, I have to walk back in time. Kasese has largely been known for the Klembe copper mines. Klembe copper mines started operating in 1956. It was a beehive of activities here as men tunneled the rocks and crushed them to extract copper. Once the copper was extracted, residue which looked like dust was dumped into 15 dumping sites. The residue is called copper tilings. The copper tilings contain other metals like copper, aluminium, zinc, iron, nickel, arsenic and lead. The copper tilings were dumped along the banks of river Nyamwamba and other piled up close to public settlements. According to geologists, some of the residue rocks have higher sulfur content. We've done a lot of uh, studies and uh, we found out that these tailings have coprophyrous material and cobaltferous material. These are basically copper and cobalt elements in them. We found out that the elements we traced in the mines and the water from the mines, that, that effluent from the mine, the water that joins the river, they all have very high levels of copper, cobalt, nickel, zinc and acid. Over the years, River Nyamwamba continued to swell and causing flooding in the area. During the flooding, water erodes the copper tilings, washes the residue downstream. The copper tilings end up into the water that is used by my communities. Some of the tilings are also drained into Lake George. From this assumption, the water which is collected by the people downstream for home consumption is heavily contaminated by metals. The animals too drink the same contaminated water and the same water is being used for irrigation at the Mopoko Irrigation Scheme Phase 2. To qualify this assumption, I took water samples from along the different points of the river, upstream before the river snakes through the Klembe Valley, midstream after the water flows through the valley and downstream where the public collects the water. And the analysis was conducted at a government water laboratory to check for the metals available in the water. After three weeks, the results were out. I presented the results to the environmental toxicologist, Dr. Abraham Wissije, for medical interpretation. These rocks were ground into powder. And then they only removed one thing, copper. All these other metals, iron, zinc, arsenic, were left behind in sand-like materials, which we call tailings. They were left there with sulfur. Sulfur oxidizes to give you sulfur dioxide. That gas mixes with water to give you sulfuric acid. The, that acid now begins dissolving all those metals which were left behind. So now they run with water into the gardens, into the houses, into Nyamwamba River, which is the main water source. 
Dr. Abraham also had conducted several similar studies in the Kilembe Valley. And even when you reach Kilembe, the smell of sulfur is clear. So people are inhaling it. Where does it end in the lungs? So when you're looking at how these people are exposed, one, via ingestion, what they eat, what they drink, what they breathe. If you inhale dust rich in metals, they end up going straight to your lungs. Three, through the skin. As people are bathing, swimming in Nyamwamba, the metals are in contact with their skins. He took the water samples, nail samples, and beef samples in a laboratory in the United Kingdom for analysis. The results will shock you. We tested them. And what did we find out? That people in Kirembe, their nails contained as many metals, sometimes 50 times, what is in the bodies of Kampala residents. So this was a confirmation. The results from the water samples showed that water contained heavy metals. All waters in Kirembe had levels of metals which are not acceptable, especially iron, aluminium, manganese, were high in the waters people are consuming. So it means it's getting into their bodies, and their bodies it will end up in the tissues and all over. They are absorbed like all other nutrients. The results from the nail samples also confirmed my worst fears. We now tried to link whether those people with many metals are already suffering from diseases associated with those metals. So we went there and collected records from Kirembe Hospital, from Kasese Health Centre 3, and it was very clear. Three diseases are dominating. Ulcers, uh, respiratory problems, cancer, and stomach complications. This is Kasese Municipal Health Centre 3, situated about uh, three kilometers from uh, River Nyamwamba. So I am at this facility to look at the number of uh, the respiratory infections and then some cases of um, ulcer. James Mirwavu, the Kasese Health Centre 3 in charge in Kase Town also confirmed these results. We've registered a very good number of, of, of cases, flu, bronchitis, cough, cough that produces the sputum, cases of uh, peptic ulcer disease, and uh, like in, in the mouth, you will find people with peptic ulcer disease may range from 50 to 100 in a month. While the results from the food samples were not any different. We found Kirembe soils had metals that were exceeding levels which are recommended for agriculture. Because they know if you grow crops in this, the crops will take up the metals and then the food will not be food fit for human consumption. So many of the soils were not fit for crop growth. These results were not surprising to Kwatampora Alex, a geologist who has been studying rocks of Kremde. Some statistics show the following. Agricultural soils, 51% of the soils that were sampled actually contaminated. Domestic water, 25 percent. The Nyamamba water downstream from, especially from the Tailings Dam Sea, 40 percent of the water is contaminated. The vegetables and others will found that they have very high levels of zinc, copper. This investigation can now confirm that the water the people and animals are consuming is heavily polluted with copper, aluminium, zinc and other metals. The levels of these metals in the water are above the World Health Organization acceptable standards. So how dangerous is for us to continue consuming water which has these heavy metals? To answer this question, I spoke to senior biologist and researcher Dr. Benjamin Mwesige. 
the number of people coming also from Kasese seem to be increasing. At least on average, we receive three people from Kasese with various cases and in adverse stage. Uh, so whereas the trend is a worldwide trend, it's also affecting Kasese as a population. And in the recent screening, we saw about uh, 12 cases, and all these cases are in adverse stage. He, however, recommends a detailed study that can lesser focus on the studying the relationship between cases and heavy metals among the people living in Kasese. They need to work with the Department of Chemistry uh, in Makerere to study the concentrations of the ores of the ions in the soil but also in the water and in the vegetables and see if there is a correlation of increase in concentration and compare that with the people. I also put the results before a senior cardiologist Dr. Charles Lugero to weigh in. Especially in Kasese, there is a study that was done uh, by one of our colleagues, uh, Dr. Mondo, and he was just trying to examine and look at what are some of the risk factors that, uh, you know, are behind the risk, I mean, the prevalence of those generally non-communicable diseases, hypertension inclusive and all those other conditions, particularly in Kasese. And actually, this uh, was implicating many things, including you know, uh, obesity and other risk factors. Unfortunately, in that study, they were not able to study uh, the, the human beings, uh, you know, how much exposure uh, to, to these heavy metals. But you can clearly tell that in that segment of the population, the prevalence of these conditions is so high. And sometimes we're actually wondering, can this entirely be explained by the traditional risk factor? So I agree, uh, probably heavy metal is an issue. He also adds that heavy metals can damage vital organs of the body. These heavy metals, the biggest challenge with them, we call them non-biodegradable. So the environment cannot degrade them, they cannot destroy them. So they stay longer in the places where they are disposed of. Now, the danger with that, over time, they actually change their status and they become, you know, they begin to release what we call uh, free radicals. So those free radicals, depending on the amount that are released, they go in and affect the inner lining of your blood vessels. And therefore, blood can easily clot in there. And depending on which organ is being supplied by this vessel that has been affected, you'll end up with a stroke, you'll end up with a heart attack, you'll end up with heart failure, you'll end up with a number of, a number of things. But who should be held accountable for the terrible waste disposal of copper tilings that have largely contributed to the deposits of heavy metals into the water? Environmental toxicologist Dr. Abraham weighs again. It's not that there is no solution. But whichever solution is costed, can they get an investor to now, okay, someone was removing cobalt they gave up. What if someone comes and removes zinc? Another one removes arsenic. But they are, they, I don't see any such plan. Dr. Abraham says that the government should have done better at regulating waste management of the copper residues. That another miner will come and do exactly what those guys did. Because the supervision appears not to be that much. So we can blame the historical mining, but even of recent, the company had started doing exactly the same. The Blempia Locus with three chairperson, Mr. Richard Bomera says, government too has not been of any help. It is very dangerous. Those tailings are very dangerous because first of all, they destroy even the vegetation. Near KCCL in Nikasese town, in the national park, you no longer see any grass. Government they did that one, 1963, to carry out research because of the copper toxic substances. It is decided to get the water from Rivasebo, which is far from the copper mining area. 
But in 2016, the same government decided to tap water from directly to Nyamwamba. We don't know why. In order to manage this situation, government invested over 10 billion in constructing river banks to avoid future flooding. But this too has not been very fruitful. So disaster is not only limited to Kirembe. It's a broad landscape through the national park in Lake George. So the fish in there is already rich of metals. So the scale is much bigger than what you think. The, the, the fish, this fish we get it from Lake George, which Lake George depends on river, on river Nyamwamba to get the water. Government has been looking for potential investors to revive the copper mines, but many of them have since abandoned the projects. A Chinese firm, Tibet Hima, was the latest on the list of investors who have since pulled out of the investment project. But experts say the first attention should be given on managing the copper tilings before any further exploration can happen. The developer that the government will identify and evaluate has to first do an environmental audit of the mine and the surroundings. And that would include the water, the... and thereafter they should immediately embark on remedies depending on the environmental audit of how to control persistent erosion of the tailings by River Nyamam. Channel the river to its original course. They have to put protective dams. They have to rebuild the dam of the tailings. The effluent from the mine has to be treated. But while the weight is still on, the people of Kasese continue to take in contaminated water, which could potentially be harmful to their health. We local people fetch water from Nyamwamba River because the tap water is quite expensive. So the only water source we have is this Nyamwamba River. Though it may not be safe, but that's the only choice we have. As a resident of Kasese, I am worried that we could be exposed to more health complications as a result of uh, taking in this water. It could also be meaning much more uh, to the government to provide a good and a better healthy service to lower health centers. The rate at which people access healthy service is low. But also the rate at which people impress, for example, to go for health service is also still low. So that automatically speaks a lot. But then, what can we do as a community? Only to sit and wait until when government comes in to help? With our little effort, we shall continue to demand for justice and for our right to access clean water. River Nyamamba is a source of water for a number of households here in Nyamamba Vision. Like me, Joel, who has just really collected this 1.5 liters of water, it's exactly what happens here every single morning and every single evening when a number of uh, women, even men, come here to collect water for drinking, others come here to collect water for washing their clothes. But a number of women, if you can look into the background, all these women don't you know that uh, this river is already contaminated. That means that uh, this river is no longer a lifeline as how we have been knowing it especially the people who have grown in this particular area. So the question is, if this river has been known to be contaminated, who will really come and save the lives of people who are depending on this water? It's the reason I, Joel Kaguta, I decided to really do this story to show the whole world that river Nyamamba, and even the water, is almost really a trap for death.